were talking about last week, mm-hmm. or was it last week we did the Smash Bros. shit? Uh, it was the E3 one, yeah. Yeah. So we're sitting there, we're talking about Smash Bros., and you know, I, you kind of mentioned that it would have been better if the Zelda that's in Smash Bros. U was the Zelda from uh, um, Hyrule Warriors. And I, yeah. I I agree with you. The more I thought about it, the more I agree. And it's like, yeah, no, that needs to be a thing, and I'm kind of disappointed it's not. Yeah. And, you know, it's not because of any reasons, like sexist reasons or anything. It's like, no, listen, she's fighting a fucking gorilla. Give her a weapon. Yeah, no, seriously. Like I like like I said, I don't I don't really dislike Zelda as a character. Um her magic was, you know, it's she's, you know, an okay character to play, but I think that would be an interesting change that they could make to the game. Especially since it almost sounds like they're still going to have the Zelda that I don't I don't know what they're doing with characters, man. The games, it's insane. Well, I read I read a uh article. Well, there's like what sixty characters it's plus four, crazy amount. four echoes, and there's a rumor going around that there at are at least, least six, six more. Six more they haven't announced since like there was uh, what fucking more? I mean, is there? There was an article that said uh, when um, the director, Ow. Uh, so- what's his name? Sakurai. Sakurai. Yeah, when Sakurai went to the, uh, I guess the developers, the programmers, his, his team, yeah. and said, "We're going to have every character from every Smash." They he was met with just dead silence, like they were like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Like, are you are you are you sure? Are, are you, you serious? Yes, Sakurai, please, <laughs> Sakurai Senpai, thank you. Mm-hmm. Seriously though, man, like that that's awesome. Like, I oh yeah, definitely, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to having all of those fucking characters, man. It's like, it's like, dude, like how could you how could you not be excited for that? I thought of one that I don't think they showed. Dr. Mario. Yeah, I I don't I I can't say I mean I, he was in the video, but I don't think was he? they okay, I don't think no I don't think they showcased him though. Yeah, he wasn't a showcase but I'm character. Pretty but sure, if he was in the video then. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that in the in the presentation he was there as a a character getting beat up or whatever. I mean, I could see him being a shadow character. I mean, um, yeah, I know he totally is uh, well, echo character. Echo, 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 shadow, echo, whatever. But yeah, he could be an echo character. I'm sure that like that wouldn't surprise me. Or maybe they'll just make him an alternate costume because he could have the same exact moves as Mario and just throw pills instead of fireballs. I mean, yeah, they've done that. They but did that, that sounds like an echo to me. Uh, it totally is. Like, yeah. yeah I mean, because that's kind of what like Lucina's an echo character yeah. and Marth and all that shit. So it's like, yeah. But I don't care. I'm fi- I'm happy with it. I'm just uh, you're giving me character all the characters I love. Uh huh. Uh, plus more, so I'm down. Character preferences, I kind of like Lucina better than Marth. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you know, whatever. Yeah, I like, uh, like I said, I like Roy. Roy is a badass. But, yeah. you know, that that was definitely one of those gaming memorable moments for me. Like, a lot of people want to sit there and say that Smash is overrated. And, you know, I could see that. Like, I see your argument, but, like, it, it, it sent tinkles down my spine because I fucking love Smash. <laughs> tingles. Yeah. Tingle. I bet Tingles. Tingle do. How much you want to bet Tingles a fucking unannounced character? I hope not. If he's not, I really if he's not. not an assist oh. trophy again, he'll be. We oh, I'm sure he'll be an assist trophy. You can't. You can't get away from him. It's. It's like he's creepy. He's supposed to be. Yeah. He's. Uh, he wants to be a fairy boy. <laughs> he ran away from home. He's 35. <laughs> He's 35 years old. He's 35 years old. He ran away from his home, his dad's house, to be a fairy. Yep. It's like, dude. <laughs> Creepy mother. Although, to be fair, man, in in in, uh, in the games he's in, he's useful, at least. So. Sells you maps in uh, Majora's Mask. And it sells you maps in Majora's Mask, and there's, there's one where I think he breaks you out of prison, I want to say. Or you break him out of prison. I don't know. And then he helps you with stuff later. See, I don't know. He he should probably be in prison. <laughs> he's pretty fucking creepy. I mean, he's, if he's, he's in like, prison, I can guess only a few things he'd be in prison for. He I should mean, be in prison. He's a 35-year-old guy wearing skin-tight tights. He's wearing, like, little boy shorts. Yeah, it's it's it sh- ultra, ultra fucked up. He should be in prison. He should be in prison. I agree. <laughs> he's still around touching little kids or something. Oh, God, creepy I hope Creepy motherfucker. Not. I hope. You, you think he's Jareding? <laughs> he's Jared. <laughs> oh, God. Let's make that a fucking verb. Jareding. Jareding. There yeah. we go. Yeah, you just the, Jareding, the act of being a fucking pedophile. I mean, just a I terrible guess. individual. Yeah, shoot him. Shoot Set him on fire. 
Shoot them out. So I wanted here's so Here's what much. you do. Here's how you can accomplish both of those things. You yeah. fire them out of a cannon into the sun. There you go. See, they'll fire. You're shooting them. And after they get enough distance, they'll freeze for a bit. But with enough momentum, they'll fly right into the sun and just burn the fuck up. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's how you do it. That, that's how you get rid of the Jareds of the world. <laughs> I love that. Have you ever heard of the uh, SCP? Foundation. Yeah, yeah. Um, they recently went. Uh, they, they recently had to take their their shit down. Did they? Yeah, like um, like I had heard. There's a lot of there's a lot of controversy going on mm-hmm. about like there's got a lot of people in there that are like newer management. And because um, I mean, it started on 4chan's X board. Yeah, it was. It, uh, they had a recent controversy where yeah. they had to like their Twitter account got take. They had to take their Twitter account down oh, and wow. the website down because there was a lot of um, toxicity. Yeah, and they were like, "Okay, we, we we don't need this." Well, I know they were getting a lot of hate because they've kind of they've gone away from uh, what it originally was, right? And then they've started a lot. They, apparently, they had a lot of um, that was that was the big problem. That's yeah. what got them taken down. And uh, the last I had heard, they were reestablishing the website, oh, and wow. it was only with the original content that put them where they were. What, oh, so the original, the old guard actually won. Old guard, maybe, maybe not. But what I was <laughs> hearing, because um, I didn't delve into it, yeah, admittedly, yeah. because it's a drama, and I I don't care. Yeah, right. Like I liked the SCP back in the day. I I read, yeah, the SCP. I've Ricky, read majority man. of those articles. I would they, say they were a lot of creepy shit, a lot of cool shit. Oh, to yeah. fuck with. And then they started like I knew one of the new things that really, um, there was like a. Uh, what is that? Oh man, there's that stupid internet fad. Like, there was a character that's like a satellite that likes, not Homestar, but Homestuck, but one of those stupid mm-hmm. internet fad video things. And yeah, I got you. That it was a newer article that a lot of people were giving shit because I guess it, it just didn't Whoops. fit anything that had been there before. Allegedly, I, I don't know one way or the other. And uh, then people were like, "Well, if you don't like it." You know, fuck off. This yeah. is my character. Like I said, that it was a transgendered satellite. That's what it was. A transgendered satellite. I just, I'm fine, guys. Whatever. A transgendered thing that does not have a gender or a personality. Yeah. Don't don't take my 100 percent word for it. I could be getting this wrong, but I know that was a part of it. Like I'm okay with transgender, and but when you start signing genders to things that have I guess it's no an organism, way to have gender. But but I mean, okay, either way, if it's, it's a satellite in the sense that it's an object <laughs> orbiting a planet, yeah. fine. If it's a satellite in the sense that it's you know a it's big like a satellite piece of tech, tech that's that we what put I didn't sky, understand. You know, like if it is something that's just orbiting, like that definition of satellite, fine. But my my what I was getting out of what I did see here about the controversy yeah. was that it was like a specifically metal object, like a satellite, satellite, like. Beep and send signals. So I don't like, know. Though. Okay, like our moon is a satellite, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like anything and, orbiting a and some of celestial the, body is a satellite. And some of the things I've seen, like mm-hmm. with in sci-fi, uh, living things can be satellites like, too. Uh, Igor. Or, yeah. Uh, the like living planet. I'm not Igor. Um, ego. Ego. The living planet. You know, if that was a small moon, it'd be a living moon. So or like um, there's been creatures in like Star Trek that yeah. were very large and had their own little orbit in a way there's been things in uh doctor who that were yeah. similar where they were large enough to not only like have their own orbit but support life and but they were living beings themselves floating through space so i mean i've seen that so like stuff like that because there's a president in sci-fi i can accept yeah no i wasn't like against it but, was but 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 if you're looking at a man-made device I don't think it was man-made it's this well, specifically mentioned saying, as an alien Okay. Well, you're looking at a, a creature-made device that's meant to maybe transmit data or know. gather data, and you're assigning it a gender. It is. I mean, if it assigned itself a gender, it's got that that's intelligence. One fine. Yeah. Either way, the whole controversy was it doesn't eat, really fit anything, and it seemed like like there's lots of stuff that like has for the sake of progression again. Maybe, but I think it was more that it was. Like, there's stuff that has memes and, like, references that are subtle. This was not subtle whatsoever. Mm. So there's a lot of people, I guess, on the site that were criticizing it. Right. And, you know, even – I'm sure there were some that were criticizing it and very, like you said, toxic, just being assholes. But on the other side, there was a lot of people like, hey, this is, like, a really badly written article right. for the SCP. Why, so, how does this fit in? So it, it There's not even anything redacted. Like the, the... – <laughs> 
which is kind of a thing. That's that's kind of a yes. theme. So yeah, so it, it, basically, it was universally disliked. I don't know about universally, or at but least, um, by the users, yes, mods were backing the creator and just banhammering people left and right. Oh, so that's where the content. Honestly, yeah, that's, that's it's censorship. That's where I get the feeling that it was progression for the sake of progression. It might have been, yeah. I mean, when you when you get, oh uh, no, that's what it was. It was they said it was they said it was a blatant um, like self insert OC do not steal type thing. Okay, yeah. Instead I mean, of being a character or a creature or a uh, an item or whatever the the SCP has always been, like SCP. Yeah, a lot of creepy research and unethical things. Well, unethical things, but then you get like things like six eight two, which is like a fucking just monster. Yeah. If it gets out, it regenerates and it, it destroys and kills and blah 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 blah, and so you get this seemed like somebody's. <laughs> Tumblr page uh, is what it was described as. I, I Yeah, I see that being a problem. So, yeah. So, I mean, there was that and other controversies that it sounded more like the site was going the way of just being Tumblrized. Mm-hmm. It was uh, the way I was I was getting from the little bit I did. And, again, like I said, I just didn't care to look any more into it because yeah, I, if it does, whatever, I'm not going to go. If yeah. it doesn't, I might go back and, like, reread old articles again that I've it was it, Yeah, for me, it was one of those things where it was mentioned in passing. There yeah. was some discussion from some of the users that uh, of a server of I moderate, and... There were like twelve or fourteen messages swapped, and then that was it. Yeah, yeah. And I never looked. Like I said, I never looked into it because um, SCP is one of those things that I don't, I don't care about. Like it's a cool little distraction for a little bit. There's a really creepy, weird shit on there, but I don't. It's kind of like it's kind of like it, it's not like I want to go and like fight for it or anything. Like plus, I don't do Twitter very much. I have like sixteen tweets, right. and they're most of them are just from this. Um. And so it's like I don't do any of that kind of battle or online discussion right, thing right. anyway. But it's the sort of thing where it's something that I used to love back in the day. And even though I haven't really checked it in, you know, a couple years or a year or so, or maybe even more than that, I don't know. Like like in depth anyway. Yeah. Um, hearing that, you know, oh, it's completely changing or it's, you know, being censored or it's they're, they're kicking out people who used to be. That's like, no, fuck you. Yeah, that's kind of not cool. That place was cool. Right. But at the same time, I'm like, well, if it if it happens, whatever. Hey, fuck it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I know that I had heard that there was, uh, they added something that was a furry-ish thing. Like, it turned, it, it, the whole thing of the SCP is it's like this ancient, uh, I want to say like Native American spirit type thing. Right. That it would turn people into coyotes or something like that. And it right. was it was vaguely furry-ish or it, maybe it's totally furry. I don't get it. But there were some people pissed about that simply because it was furry. I read the article and to me it very much fits into the SCP. Right. It's a little like there's like almost not forced but there's like a sexual aspect to it that's like – I you know that being in there whatever it's not something you usually see in SCPs. You didn't really need it to be there. Yeah, yeah. but at the same time, like the rest of the uh, the rest of it, like uh, I fit as far as I you know cared as far as you cared. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it doesn't seem that much different from um, like the what was uh, there's like a Japanese uh, what's the fox demon thing? Oh, the kitsune. Yeah, that eats livers. <laughs> That's, that's, that uh, thing's fucking terrifying. That sounds pretty, pretty uh, SCP-ish to me. No, no, it's totally SCP. Yeah, I, like, I think that was one that they have on lockdown at the facility. But I don't know. I used to love reading the stories where they'd, because that's a big part of it is it's just creative writing, right? So people would come up with like the containment breaches, where I know there was one long one, and it might have not been like official canon. It might have been one of the comedy stories. If something is listed with a with a, a, a C or an A or something. Right. That means it's a humorous. It's there for comedy purposes. Right. Um, but there was one where, like, uh, somebody got a vampire, got like a vampire-esque SCP, got pissed off at a doctor. So he ended up getting the vampire eaten by 682 or some crazy shit like that. Like, oh, okay. Just this yeah. huge fucking... Just funny story. I love that. I love those kind of stories. Yeah, that's kind of back when yeah. I used to, you know, actually browse the site pretty often. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking at a, a new subreddit, a new favorite subreddit of mine called yeah. um, News of the Stupid. Oh, by the way, we're the Unguidly Geeks. Hi, I'm yeah. Luke. I'm Joe. 
<laughs> um, anyway. I don't know. Is that the longest we've gone without the introduction? That very well might be, besides those episodes. Two topics? We just didn't do one. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. That's true. Um, okay, anyway, I, I'm reading this. It's, it's one of my favorite new subreddits. It's, it's not big. It's not very large. Yeah. So it's nothing like Florida Man size, but it's Florida Man-esque, but it's worldwide, like I said. Yeah. Um, I'm reading an article right now. Man tried to seduce undercover officer with chicken Alfredo. I mean, all right. Um, you know what the bad thing is? Is this happened in our own backyard? Oh, great! In Cincinnati? No, th- oh. thankfully not quite that close. It happened <laughs> in Austin Town, Ohio. An Ashtabula County man who tried to seduce an underage victim with chicken Alfredo and Sprite was for seven days in the county jail. Albert Maruna, now 23, was arrested in an Austin Town sex sting back in December. He thought he was talking to a 15-year-old boy online, but he was oh, actually God. an undercover Austin Town police officer. It's like. <laughs> Maruna arranged to meet the officer in Austin Town. He planned to bring lubricant, Sprite, and chicken Alfredo to the date. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to get me a little fat kid. It's creepy. And fuck. you look at his picture, and I'll put it up in the video, guys. Don't worry. He's he's oh, just a fat gosh. guy. Just a creepy ass bastard. Just a creepy fat guy. Fuck. It's like, what is wrong with you, man? <laughs> like, come on, dude. What seriously? What is what is wrong with you, buddy? So yeah, that that's that's fun. That's so fucked up. <laughs> I'm gonna bring Alfredo. <laughs> Alfredo and Sprite and lubricant to meet with a 15 year old boy. You're 23. Dude, come on. You could seriously, you could surely you can do better. Man. There you go. That's a Jarrett. Let's fucking shoot That's him in the Jared. space. Yep. Let's shoot him in the space. Put him on the rocket with the rest. <laughs> you say anything about a rocket? I mean, I don't know if you could do it with a cannon. I, don't get me wrong. If you want to shoot them out of a cannon at the sun, I mean, here's fine. what we do. They're not going to break orbit, Maybe but then they will come crashing back down to the ground. Well, they could break orbit. We just had to make a, a strong enough cannon. I don't think we. I mean, I guess. We just got to break terminal velocity. It's fine. The okay. smaller it is, the easier it is to propel the thing faster to it. The less it weighs, the less I mean, it I'm just, I'm just going back to, do. like, the Gustav cannon, and those cannons were fuck off huge, and they didn't break orbit. Here's what or maybe do. they did. I don't know. You know what? And they were shooting London from, like, eastern Germany, so... <laughs> I mean that's that's a that's, that's a, a few, quite a long distance. That's a few hundred miles, and space is only sixty-one miles away, or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, maybe, maybe. And it doesn't need that much, you know. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a two hundred fifty-pound human just flying straight up. I mean, oh, I mean, in that case, they're gonna they're gonna fucking disintegrate long before. Like they'll, you know what we di- we didn't say we were trying to necessarily make it to the sun. I want them to hit that the part sun, was a joke. God damn it. That part was that part was a joke, but we did say specifically they're going to burn up if they burn up on the way out of the atmosphere. <laughs> mission accomplished, dude. <laughs> Right? Like, yeah. we set them on fire. We shot them and set them on fire. Literally. Um, but what, what, here's a, here's a thought. Um, we put them on a rocket that is a cannon, and then we fire the rocket into space. We point it and just fire the cannon. Mm-hmm. I wonder if, uh, I mean, that's fine. Uh, yeah. That might work. I still say we put them in a metal tube. That way they can get that velocity and everything. Yeah, and like then s- smooth it down a bit. Hit something. <laughs> Aim it so it'll like hit the top of Mount Everest or something. I don't want to hurt Or a Mount volcano. Everest. How about a volcano? volcano? Yeah. Right. I mean, we got plenty of those. Oh my God, there's like how many in Iceland alone? Yeah, like fuck, dude. We got yeah. plenty. We'll be fine. Here's what we do. Um, how about we just find an opening in that super volcano, that caldera underneath Yellowstone, and just drop them in that? I Well, thankfully, I don't think there are any openings. That's why we aren't all dead. Right. How about we just put them in the water that's there that's superheated then? All right, we just hold them. That See, okay, that is almost, I mean, maybe there's nothing too bad for those fuckers. I mean, we're talking about shooting them into a volcano. How? Yeah. And we were talking about shooting them into space. There is no limit to our inhumaneness of these <laughs> people. Point. You know, like, come on, dude. <laughs> Holding them Let's over a geyser. Let's get creative here. Let's strap them down on top of a geyser and just let it fucking do its thing. You know, okay. We got really, really dark there, and yeah. that was. Don't ask us what we're doing. Actually, no, we do know what we're doing today. We're going to talk about some uh, memorable gaming moments after we talk about killing pedophiles. Apparently, because yeah. that's what we did. That's what we just did for twenty minutes. 
<laughs> talk about pedophiles and chicken alfredo and some other thing that I no Just longer remember. Just some weird shit. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of how we get off topic. Um, we just one thing is all it takes. But uh, some of my most memorable gaming moments, um, probably my most memorable one uh, was when I was very young. I was five or six, mm-hmm. and my dad and I went to a store. Now I can't remember what store it was, but we bought Super Mario Brothers three, and that was my first the first video game I ever had. Mm-hmm. Like, because it was bought for my birthday. So, Super Mario Brothers 3, it came at home, I played the fuck out of it. Yeah. And then we cheated on it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have a policy these days where I won't cheat at a game until I've completed it at least one time without. Mm-hmm. Unless it's one of those games that's been around for so long, or is so incredulously unfair <clears throat> to begin with. You know, mm. I might. I might on those. I don't know. Well, the the game that I can remember cheating on the most recent it recently was Far uh, Fallout Four. Oh, I yeah. played that with uh, with the uh, cheaty mods. Oh uh, well, or, well, I uh, wouldn't cheaty c- command con- console co- commands. console commands, yeah. and it wasn't even anything really insane. I probably put 150, 250 hours into that game before I finally went and realized literally all I was doing was going place to place, picking up garbage. To upgrade my base and build um, new things, guys. Fallout in a nutshell. Yeah, Fallout Four in a nutshell. You go, for, you go there, kill people, and take their trash, and then use it to build a structure made from trash. Yes, and then use it to make your guns a little bit better and make new stuff. And it's just after a, re- a while, I realized I'm really sick and tired of looking for fucking duct tape. Oh I am God. so sick and tired. So finally, I started using batch commands and getting like 999 duct tape. I mean, I can't say I blame you there. I've had I've had yeah. those situations in Morrowind and Skyrim where it's like, yeah. I'm tired of hunting for mushrooms that I need for this alchemy thing. Or I'm tired of hunting for this item where it's on one side of the fucking map. And I know it's there. It's like, no, I'm just going to give it to myself and yeah. do the quest. That's the funny thing is I never... With how many hours I put into Skyrim and those other games, I never did that. Right. Um, plus, I was on console. I was on the Xbox 360 anyway. But with Fallout 4, it's just... And I knew I could do it early on, and I just didn't. But I played for... I can just get in that zone, you know? Like, in Skyrim, when I put my smithing and chanting and um, something else all the way up to 100. Yeah. Uh, doing that was just... It was grinding. all. The, but it was like... I put on an audio book or I'd listen to a podcast and I'd just sit there and just go and do that over the course of a couple days. In Fallout 4, I did the same thing where it was just I'd get little side quests or I'd just start fucking walking around and go, oh, hey, those guys over there? Yeah, they're assholes. And just wipe all of them out and take all their stuff. <laughs> That's like what I do on Skyrim is just in general, if I yeah. ever go back and play it. Um, I, I don't know that I can. There have been those a change. There's been those like like cravings, I guess you yeah. could say. I was like, yeah. oh, same thing with me with Fallout Four, especially with Fallout seventy eight. Yeah, seventy six. Seventy six. Sorry, yeah. I, I keep calling it seventy eight. Why do you keep doing that? Stuff I don't down. know. But seventy six, I'm like, man, I kind of want to go back and play Fallout Four. And then I actually pulled up my Nexus and looked at how many mods I would have to update. And the game is updated, so I know even then half my mods will not, like not work anymore. And I was like, nope. That is way too much to do just to start playing the game. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, I, I couldn't. That's kind of why I didn't. Um, I, I deleted it off my Switch, and I'm not downloading it again. On Skyrim? There. Yeah, because I wanted to make room for an actual good game. Yeah. But um, I, I deleted it from my Switch, and I'm like, I'm not downloading it there ever again. But there was a there's a, a thing I thought, hey, you know, I could I could download it in there on my PC and mod it and play it. And yeah. No. And then it's like, no, man, the, the amount of time I would seriously probably do all of that, get all the mods working again, get the game running, start it, and then turn it off within five minutes and be yeah. like, okay, that was fun. I'm done playing today, and then not pick it up again. Actually, that this is reminding me of one of my favorite gaming moments. Um, and this is something I've actually heard lots of other people say, but for me, it was the first time I actually sat down to play a game like that. And it was when um, a friend of mine had brought over and we played, I played Oblivion for the first time on a friend's Xbox 360. 
Mm-hmm. And it was just like, oh, you can do me. what? You can go anywhere? You can just hunt deer if you just want to go out in the woods and shoot deer with bows and, like, collect. And, and, like, I was like, like you could do everything? Like, really? And the openness of that game blew my mind. So I went and I worked on, I started, like, I didn't mow lawn. I wasn't one of the people that pushed a lawnmower around to mow lawns. I hate yard work. I volunteered to do a bunch of yard work to make money that summer. Um, yeah, and then I went, man. oh, yeah. And then I went and, like, I did... I did some other stuff. I think I saved birthday money and I got enough money where I, you know, got with my dad, went to Best Buy and bought an Xbox 360 and a copy of Oblivion and took it. And I still remember playing the beginning of that game. I'm not, not getting the class creation. Of that game is still fucking stupid. And I still remember my first character. The, I, the, the It did not really work for later on but i still remember going through the beginning of that game where you go and you meet the king and you go through the uh the secret passageway through the prison and then when you exit that prison and the game opens up and you go in the open the the rest of the world yeah and it starts playing that main theme and you're looking out at just you know everything and it looks at the time um, while characters looked like potatoes, the oh rest of the God. game looked beautiful. Like seriously, like that—that's one oh, of the biggest. That's one of the biggest turnoffs for me. And I know that's such a stupid and petty thing to not want to play a game for. Nah. But seriously, that's why I won't play it. Yeah, the character models in that game are awful. But everything else, the openness of that world when you leave that when you leave the uh, the sewers was just like, oh my God, this is what video games can be. Because before that. Like, the only game I wanted to play on the 360 was Call of Duty 2. And while that's one of the, my favorite first-person shooters of all time, Oblivion was just something completely different. I mean, yeah, Oblivion takes and, that and to, to a new extreme. Oh, yeah. I like, mean, at that point, I put I mean, 400 hours into the game or something crazy like you, that. You sit there, you play it on PC. You can turn it into a first-person shooter if you really, really want to. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's a first-person uh, role-playing game. But, I mean, you can just use magic or download mods for guns and that's, stuff. That's exactly, yeah, that's exactly why. I mean, there's the Dwemer bolt gun, which <laughs> is fucking awesome shit. Like, yeah, man. So I mean, you know that that's kind of that's kind of neat. Yeah, I think um, my, the wallpaper on the uh, the studio laptop here kind of reminds me of another um, memorable gaming moment for me. Uh, the wallpaper is a series of screenshots from The Legend of Zelda: a Link to the Past, which is one mm-hmm. of my favorite Zelda games of all time. And uh, it was it was getting through that game and and just playing through and getting the Master Sword for like the very first time. Oh yeah. And uh, you know the the uh, wise man whose name I am not even gonna try to pronounce. Hmm. You know he talks to you for the first time, and then you go and you go, oh shit, you gotta rescue the princess, you gotta rescue the princess. And you go down there, man. You go to Hyrule Castle, and you you know you fight uh, the wizard Aghanim, fucking total douche, and then you defeat him, and he pulls you into the dark world, and you start. And you're just in this big open world on the top of this giant fucking pyramid in the middle of the goddamn map. You're like, all right, what do I do now? Yeah, oh yeah. Then there's no hand holding. It's just yeah, no. That game just goes. There's no from... quest markers. There's no. Oh yeah, you need to go this way. It's like yeah. you need to figure that shit out on your own. And uh, I mean that that was a huge huge moment for me for little little me man because that was a big deal man. That was you know we're talking 1992. Yeah, oh yeah. So I was you know uh, what uh, I don't know if I want to do the math. I was six or seven. Like I was real fucking young and I'm playing this game. And it's like mind is just blown. Like same thing with with you in Oblivion when you first saw Oblivion. That was my reaction with this game. Yeah. Because it was just you just had a huge map. And granted, you had a huge map on light world and dark world. Um, but with the light world, there was a bit of a clear direction, whereas with the dark world, there wasn't at first. You didn't know what the fuck you were doing. Yeah, it just kind of threw you in the. It just kind of threw you there, and it's like whoa. And you know, I I played a lot of this game, and I figured out you know ways to do things and to to make it easier to make it better. And I've getting I've gotten into areas where I shouldn't be yet and stuff like that because there is a bit of linearity to it. But there's a little you you can you can go off the beaten path a bit with the game. So that was another one of those another bit of a memorable moment when I realized, oh shit, I can go to this this palace over here, the dark palace, and and before I get the crystal, get the hammer, and then I can go over to the village. And I can go through the village, and I can go through that dungeon, mm. and I can get that item, the, the Titan's Mitt. And then I can go and get the Tempered Sword three or four dungeons before I'm supposed to be able to have it. Yeah. And make all these boss fights so much easier. <laughs> 
Yeah, oh yeah, it's one of the last Zelda games until like Breath of the Wild, where it was completely you had the option to do what you wanted. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, there were still thing, there were still times where you would get railroaded, yeah. you know, into into doing a specific task or specific dungeon. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, it was definitely a, it's definitely way more open world than I would consider something like uh, Ocarina of Time or Majora's mm-hmm. Mask. Um, but Majora's Mask is probably significantly less linear because there's the one path that you take. Pretty much, But yeah. there's so many branching paths off to do other things and side Because quests. there's so many things you you do and then you, you know, reset time. And, and you got to do some yeah. things again to get to do other things. And that you was the, take different paths. you got to get different treasures. That was the only Legend of Zelda game that I've played so far that I went and I was like, yep, I'm getting a guide. And I'm playing this game with a guide because there was so many times where I would know that I was so close to finishing something before the end of the three days. And then I just fucking either mental block or just was like, I have no idea what to do next. And I've got six minutes. Here's what I'm going to point out. Yeah. Majora's Mask is the Metroidvania of Zelda's. Mm, yeah, I get. Yeah, there, there are. Close. I mean, there are. There are because you have to go and find. You know, you have to go and find power ups to progress in certain areas. You have to go and find. I mean, that's that's kind of every Zelda game. Has every that, Zelda though. game is like that, but not every Zelda game has you going back to the same areas over and over again yeah. to get different things. You know, not every Zelda has you going. In fact, I can't think of another Zelda that has you visiting the same areas so many times as many yeah. times as you do with Majora's Mask. And, after well, you get I mean, with abilities the, with to that unlock mechanic, different things. Yeah, with that mechanic, especially because certain times you would have to not do something early on and then go there later when mm-hmm. it's – yeah, it was very interesting. I guess it's close. I would not – I mean, uh, to I'm, me, not, I'm not saying Metroidvania – Well, okay, what I'm saying is I'm not saying it's the exact same oh, as something it, like it, Symphony it, of the yeah. Night or Dead Cells or uh, it's, obviously Metro, Super Metroid itself. But it's one of those things where if they're, if you could look at this entire – this entire franchise, yeah. that would be the Metroidvania of the franchise because every game has been a little bit different. They've yeah. all had the same basic principle of adventure type game. But yeah, if there's if there's one you could call that, it would be that one. Like there's so much stuff in that clock town that you can unlock after you get certain abilities or certain yeah. items that you couldn't do before. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the mailman or uh, the, the dancing asshole. sisters and the yeah. up there by After the... you get the uh, mask that lets you dance. Yeah. That's, there was so many crazy shit in that game. That Just was so a, much. So, yeah, I mean, and Majora's Mask was definitely another one of those memorable games. When, you, uh, when you're going through the initial forest and you're chasing after a skull kid, and then, you know, you get turned into that... That uh, and I'm sorry, a lot of my memorable gaming moments are probably going to be from Zelda games. Oh, I like I've already been thinking about four or five that I was like, nah, I don't want to go and make this the Zelda hour. <laughs> but I mean, like, no, that's a thing for me though. Like Zelda yeah. has been a huge part of my life, so I, I can't, I can't just ignore that. I mean, and most of my memorable game, most of the moments I hold most dear are from Zelda games. Oh, yeah. Like when you first get, when you, you know, you're chasing the skull kid, you finally catch up to him, he turns you into a goddamn Deku bush. Uh, that game was because there was it's so different and so many like i don't know set points i guess is the best way like when you get turned in it's so depressing and when you go i still remember when i went and talked to uh the rudos mm-hmm. the, the 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 fish people right they, they yeah are, you, um, zoras. zoras i'm sorry zoras and rudo is the name of their princess yeah i talked to rudo but uh Not did she have a game. different name in that game she did <laughs> well you realize that You've taken the face of the dude, and we've talked about this game extensively before on the podcast. But everyone that you're imitating, that you've you've gotten a mask of, that you're, you're close t- to, you've literally taken they're their dead. Face. Yeah, yeah they're, they've just died. It is so de- fucking depressing. The, even the Deku Sprout is like at the end of the game, the credits. You see the his father or whatever the the butler. The, yeah, like at his the, at his at grave, his grave, essentially. Yeah. That's like that oh, game damn. is so depressing, man. But, um, but but those moments when I realized that that was crazy that that was the game where I was like I almost don't want to play this anymore. So let's get away from Zelda for yeah. a minute because like I said, a lot of my moments um, are going to be are going to be that. Yeah. What about the first time you saw Super Mario in fucking 3D? Um, you know I. I never owned Mario Super Mario 64. Oh, that's right. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. Like, it was the first game I wanted. It was out of stock. That's why I didn't get it. Oh, man. I ended up I'm, getting... I'm um, what was the first game I bought? 
was it Goldeneye 64? Uh, I, I honestly, I can't remember what game I got instead of Super Mario 64. Right. Uh, it was something, it was one of the, like, those, like, legendary games, though. I think it was either, no, it wasn't Donkey Kong. But it, either way, yeah, I, I didn't get it. It was out of stock at the Myers because fuck them, fuck me, apparently. I got something yeah. else. Um, but, yeah, no, like, I, I, I played that game a lot at a friend's house, um, but I was not. I'm not. I'm terrible at platformers. Yeah, and I, I was could, terrible I mean, at that game. I played the first. Like I would do the first area with the chain chomp and right, the, right. the womp at the top of the or the the bomb, 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 bomb. Yeah. king bomb, bomb, king bomb, bomb and stuff. I would do that area and like this like this next three, and then that was it. Because <laughs> well, I didn't own the game, so I never played it any further. But, it's, but it's, I was terrible at for that me. Game. For me, it was a big deal, man. When you you know you. you, you Mario pops up out of his thing. You can run around in all oh, directions. Man, it was great. No, you that, go that opening door, area at the palace. You, you go into uh, the door. You go into that first that first uh, level, and it's just boom. You have this big fucking just playground. You just have this big playground, and, and you're Mario, and yep. you can just go in any direction and do anything you want. Jump around, Actually, punch shit. You could punch shit. Yeah, like that was a big deal. <laughs> Mario punch, yeah. Like Mario you've never seen him shit. punch. It's like Mario's violent. What? What's what's going on here? I still remember when you get twelve stars, 12, 10, 12 stars, and you just look up and you get the flying the 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 the, the wing hat. Yeah, and how that blew my fucking mind. <clears throat> yeah, I was like sitting there so and... excited, <sighs> like to have that and yeah. just to do that. I would do that for hours. Yeah, yeah. I mean that that was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah. There was like. I don't know. I don't remember like exactly how far I got in that game. Eventually, I think I rented it one time and someone had beat it. So I went through and just fought Bowser multiple times, like each level of Bowser. Right. But the third Bowser, I it took me fucking fifty lives to get through the level that leads up to him. Yeah, it, because it was um, fucking hard. It, that last that last Bowser level was rough. Yeah. Um, I think. For me, um, another memorable moment related to this game was when I finally got the 120th star. Mm-hmm. And there was a lot of personal turmoil that was going on that particular day that, that caused me to do it. Um, but there's a – like in the first level, you remember the race with Koopa Troopa. Yeah. You get a rematch later on and it's like <laughs> five it's, – it's so much harder. It's actually yeah. – scratch that. It's not that it's so much harder. It's that A, it's actually challenging. Mm-hmm. And B, there's so many things in your way. The big cannonballs and just uh, platforms that cause you to zig that force you to zigzag if you're gonna, so yeah. and he's actually fast. Like he's he's not yeah. just uh, so you actually you actually have to try with this one and it, it's it's a million times harder and for the longest time my family and I because it was a it was a big kind of team affair, um, none of us had ever gotten it. Yeah. None of us. This, this was the final star. This was the last star oh, that we man. had to get. And one day, after a very traumatic event in my childhood, I went and sat down and played it. And in my very first try, boom! I got that fucking star. Yeah. Now I do remember cheating. I will. I will go hopefully admit <laughs> to that. Like I didn't get it without cheating. But it was one of those stars that, even with cheating, was extremely difficult yeah. for thirteen or fourteen year old me and my father, however old he was at the time. My mom, like none of us, could get it, and I finally got it that day. And I was like, "Yes, yeah, yes." <laughs> you know, like like uh, in at the end of Guardians Two, when the Reavers come up and have that uh, that f- the oh, funeral when they for, show up for the for, funeral, for yeah, Yandu. And, uh, you know, you got the little dude who I could have swore was Tom Green, but it's not Tom Green. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, that, that wasn't me that day. I, yeah. I got it. I finally got it. We got it, guys. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was a big, memorable moment for me. That's awesome. I love that feeling. And I, it's something that you get. I've gotten multiple times in games, usually around the end of a game. Yeah. Where you get that feeling like that, that just pressure. And you're fucking so hyper focused, like I'm gonna finally, I'm gonna finally beat this fucking thing. Yeah, I'm gonna get through this spot, and like that, that feeling is one of the best. It's honestly, it's one of the reasons I still play PUBG mm-hmm. because once you get into that top ten, and then you're sneaking around and you're like hyper focused and everything. Yeah, you get that. I can get that like every game. 
Right. That I'm in, that we make it to the ending where you just get into those, oh my God, where's the guy? Where is he? And start fucking shooting off against people and stuff. I, um, I've been playing bits of Fortnite recently and I, yeah. I kind of, I kind of understand now. Yeah. Like I kind of understand it. Like I think Fortnite is better than PUBG. It's a little more fun. The art style is a little better and it's, yeah. it's less, uh, intense in the, in the same way. Like that's still actually an, that's why I, I, I and I think it's a product of playing PUBG first. Right. That one I'm not a big third person shooter fan, mm-hmm. but I I do like them. Like I love Gears of War and I like the more hardcore I guess aspects of them. But going over and playing Fortnite, yeah, I don't like it. Like I, I'm like gonna, I played I, it on the Switch. I'm gonna throw it out there. That's the only reason why I've played it is because yeah. it's on the Switch. No, same here. Yeah, I downloaded it on the three or on the Xbox One, played it like three times, and never played it again. But on the Switch, even so, I'm like, it's it just feels too cartoony. And I guess in that type of game, I want that more um, hardcore, almost like not not quite like. Um, uh, Counter Strike, realism, or Arma, or, or, or definitely nowhere near Arma. But I which like is, it being which is more. How PUBG got start was as an Arma mod. It was an Arma mod, but yeah. it's nowhere near Arma now. Oh, I know that. No, but it's, 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 it's in a completely different engine now. So well, yeah, but uh, it's it's like I, I just I'm not I I can't get into Fortnite the way yeah. PUBG pulls me in. I mean, I I, I I'm not. I, yeah, I, I I see I see exactly where you're coming from, and I'm not going to say I'm into it. It's yeah. just one of those things that I've had some fun with. I played the 50 v 50, which was good before they took it away, and yeah. I played the 20. Yeah, man, I probably should have played that. Yeah, I mean, because I play a lot of I played solo a lot. It, it's pretty. It's it's a it's a little bit better. You know, yeah. you got some people back, and you up the 20. They have 20 versus 20 versus 20, like 20 man squads now, yeah. which is fine. But it's not as good as the 50 band squads, in my opinion. And, I mean, I was playing it for a little bit this morning. And so, yeah, I, 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 can, I see the appeal of these games. Yeah. I, they're still not for me. The Battle still, Royale in general. Yeah, like, yeah. I still don't enjoy them like I would uh, any single-player game or something like Hollow Knight or, or Dead Cells. Um, any other multiplayer games that we've had, like Duck Game. Duck Game is fucking fun, but that's oh, probably yeah. that's a battle royale game too, but on a much smaller, yeah, a and different kind of scale, incredibly ridiculous scale. Yeah. Um, so like Borderlands Two, the co-op games that we play, like I, I love that kind of stuff. But I, I even with something like Fortnite, which I think makes the the battle royale genre a little more accessible to definitely uh, more accessible to like noobs it's, like myself yeah i i still can't say oh yeah this is great but I, it's it's fine yeah yeah the the uh i don't know whatever skill i, I, of entry. I, I still want to the barrier of entry barrier of entry yeah i still want to say battle royale needs to die but it, for me it, yeah. it really has become that crafting game survival game i'm tired oh, of seeing it man i just see i think i i, I, I won't I, say it needs to die I want there to be a I want somebody to come out with a really good like battle royale game from Jump Street where they come out with a complete game and it's re- it's it's engaging and fun and adds new stuff. Dude, dude, Skyrim battle royale. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, you know what? Maybe that's the way to do it is do melee weapons and things like that and have yeah. like crossbows or something, who knows. But I don't but the thing I don't like is that Everyone, AAA and and indie and everybody jumped on. We have to make battle royale modes for our games, or we have to make a battle royale that, game. I mean, that, that, that sucks, that's and that exactly, is going to kill it. That's exactly why I. Yeah. Uh, that, that's why I have that fatigue because yeah. it's the same thing. When Minecraft came out, how many fucking Minecraft clones <sighs> popped up? Man. It's it's you know when when that be, when they added survival mode, how many survival games popped? up? I will up? say there was a lot more of those than because yeah, I mean, it was easier. It's yeah, just obviously anybody could make that. Yeah, game. I mean absolutely, but, I get you there. And I'm but yeah, on board no, there. I, I completely but understand it, yeah, the oversaturation of this. Yeah, games. exactly. It's it's a fatigue thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I uh, a moment that uh, you just had me thinking of. Yeah. Um, playing uh, 007 Goldeneye. Yes, Goldeneye, multiplayer. Goldeneye. Oh, I Goldeneye multiplayer was one of those things I didn't get to play too often because I didn't have enough people to play. Yeah. But when you, yeah, it's really good. Um, another one for that. Uh, one I. I enjoyed thoroughly. Uh, Perfect Dark took everything that Goldeneye did. Oh man, it did a it even bit better. better? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they added the bots. They added all the extra mode. Like King of the Hill was a fun mode. Oh yeah. Um, one of my favorite things in Perfect Dark, actually, now that you got me thinking about that, was the laptop gun. 
<laughs> you could set it up and then leave it? You could set it up as a sentry, and if you had one-hit kills on, you're racking up 40 or 50 kills mm-hmm. before that thing runs out of ammo. Um, I loved... Uh, but yeah, playing... After Goldeneye, yeah. there was... Uh, like a, When the GameCube came out, um, there was Agent Under Fire and... Um, uh, 007. That reminds me of another. Something Frostfire. So there was two. There was two Bond games that came out for it, and they took and they added all the stuff like Perfect Dark. It had they had bots and stuff, right? And they had lots of fucking new items. They had sentry guns, and one of them had items where you could run through the map. And you could find like a little remote control helicopter. <laughs> you could fly that remote control helicopter and it had missiles and a machine gun. And me and my friends would play. Uh, versus matches on that game where it would be us and then we would put like one bot with all of its skills all the way up so this thing had like preternatural senses oh like God. it would just snap shoot you headshot it like had that a, sounds had like a perfect bot. that sounds like perfect sim on a uh, perfect dark yeah pretty much so we would like gather all our weapons and then like defend an area as best as we could while this fucking predator was like hunting us and shit. Uh, that, that it sounds... was just so stupid, much fun. Speaking of the GameCube era, mm-hmm. um, and this this was a huge thing for me. I, I was like sixteen or seven, seventeen, maybe eighteen at the time. The first time I heard the word fuck, not just in a video game but on a Nintendo console as well, was the game thirteen. You remember that game? Oh my god! I I told this story. Yeah. I think before where they, my dad would not let me get um like um crime and punishment or, or one of those those sin pol- and, yeah sin and punishment or something. It wasn't like sin that. and punishment. It was it was a it was a police game kind of GTA esque. So instead, I was like, well, let me get this cell sated shooter called Thirteen. Way more graphic. Like you said, it said fuck in the game. Yeah, like like <laughs> not, that was a first for me because not only had I never heard that word. Like on in video games, like that wasn't yeah. a thing that they did at the time that I can no. remember. And not only that, but it was on Nintendo. It was mm-hmm. on the GameCube of all things. This 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 little box that was presumed to be family friendly because that was the image Nintendo had at the time. <laughs> and you had this dude saying, "Get the fuck out of here!" And, and in, in like the first five minutes of the game, yes, it was very early on. And for me, I was, like I said, I was maybe seventeen, eighteen at the oldest. It blew my mind, man. Yeah, it was yeah. like Holy I was, I was a lot. Shit. I was younger, and I still the first item you get. In that game was throwing knives. Yeah, and I still remember the first guy you kill. You walk out of this place and chuck a throwing knife at this dude's throat, and it stabs him in the neck, and he's ah, like, like grabbing his neck, blood spurting out, and I'm like, holy fuck, this is dark, this and I'm like, super this is violent. awesome, yeah. And I, yeah. oh man, I love that game. I, that, that was that was a big deal for me, man. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, which leads me into my next moment, and it, it, it's significantly more recent. It was when Skyrim came out. Yeah. Now I hate I hate the game. Now it's a, it's a love hate relationship. Just because. Yeah. But when it came out, because uh, it's become a fucking meme. Yeah. But when it came out, man, it's coming I, soon to Android. <laughs> I, I dropped. <laughs> I dropped a uh, three hundred and twenty ish dollars to play this game. I bought an Xbox three hundred and sixty. I bought a hard drive. I bought the game, and I think I bought a wireless controller at the time. Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. Um, that might have come later. But yeah, I buy. I bought all this shit to play this game. And, you know, the game starts up and you're in the cart. You're looking around. You're looking at the mountains. Yeah. You're seeing those fog effects. you got Rayloff in your face and his mouth is moving and he's speaking to you. And his lips. They didn't look like potatoes. They didn't look like <laughs> potatoes. That's an important <laughs> distinction there. Yeah, from Blippi. And not only that, but his mouth, like the way his lips were moving, it looked like he was actually saying the oh, words yeah. that they were coming finally... out of his mouth. Like they had gone to a point where they had the motion capture mm-hmm. to a, like good enough that it looked like he was actually speaking to you and his mouth just wasn't moving. It was like. And it was mind blowing. And then you're sitting there and you're watching the intro and you're rolling down on that cart. That guy, you know, uh, Lokir goes running away and the guard shoots him in the back, you know, it's like, and yeah. kills him. It's like, whoa. And then you're sitting there, you get your head knocked down on the chopping block and you look up and there's fucking. There's a fucking dragon. There's a big black fucking badass looking dragon that's like, holy shit. Like, that was a big moment oh, yeah. for me, man. Cause I mean, that, that was one of those things that. Um, Because I had played Morrowind. I couldn't get into Oblivion, but I played thousands of hours of Morrowind, which was probably the most D&D game I've ever played. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just like, 
it, it was it was different. It was a shock to me, but it was one of those things that was like, I really like this. Oh yeah. I, they, I had a lot of that with Skyrim where me, it was, you know, oh my God, run away from the dragon. And then as soon as I found my first set of armor and sword, I was like, all right, now motherfuckers, now it goes down. And Who then, was going to chop my head off? Get over here. And then you still die. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, actually, I, I don't remember if I died there. I died pretty, I think I got killed by the bear because was, of course I did. Yeah. I mean, bears are it's fucking a bear. vicious. Um, um, you really, that, the GameCube hit off probably the biggest and it this goes right back to the beginning of the episode the one of the best things i remember or that i have from gaming with friends is super smash brothers yeah the first time you played melee yeah oh yeah oh, well yeah. not even the first time we would i mean it, melee was amazing and playing with friends was amazing but we used to get <clears> together <throat> At uh, my buddy's, uh, and I don't think he'll care because Sean, it's Sean. But my buddy Sean, up, we Sean? would go, yeah, hopefully he listens to this. Uh, and Sean's garage is where we hung out from like, I think, junior and senior year, or maybe sophomore, junior and senior year. Basically a, a while. That was where we'd go. That was the spot for a while. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We would just it, go there and smoke down, get really high, and then play Super Smash Brothers Melee. And we would sit there, and it was like a fucking, like, groups of us. And obviously, it's the GameCube, so only four of us play at a time. Right. But we used to have just fucking epic battles on Smash Brothers, where we would just play for fucking hours. Yeah. And I mean, just, like, ev- like everybody had their their main characters, and it was like, no, I'm going to kick your ass. No, fuck you for you using Pikachu. Captain Falcon is going to fucking knee you all to death. Like, like we used to talk so much shit. My buddy J-Max, like, nope, Link all the way, 100% all day. J-Max, my man. Mark. Oh, yeah. Link J-Ma- is my main. When I started playing with you, I was like, another motherfucker who just use this link. <laughs> I mean, I can use plenty of other characters. Like, I whip yeah. your ass with Mewtwo, but, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, when you started using Link, I'm like, god damn, I'm always fighting Links. But that was like, we would just have, just play that for hours and hours and play the uh, the map from Majora's Mask. Yeah. Oh, my God, I'm so happy to see that coming back. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, it's so there's beautiful. There's a lot of good maps, and I'm glad yeah. they're coming back. Like, Final Destination was always my shit. Final yeah. Destination in its Omega form. We had to end. It's such a beautifully simple map. It's oh, yeah. Like, fuck yeah, give me that. Every time, like, if when we were done playing that game... Every like the every fifth time, every fifth map or something, we do Final Destination. Mm-hmm. Like every time we end it, we do Final Destination. Like five or ten stock, two point damage. Yeah, yeah. Like um, medium items, like certain ones taken out. Like no healing, no stars, stuff Nothing. like that. Yeah. And then we'd play Final Destination, and it would just be this epic fucking like just everyone's screaming everyone's like he's gonna get you you're gonna die like just craziness yeah i mean absolutely loved it and then i played against people who were actually like tournament smash players and went well i'm not good (laughs) um i mean it's the same for me yeah like like smash like we would all gather at our place we'd just play smash all fucking day and it was one of those things where my friend greg and i we we got we were, obviously we're nowhere near tournament status. Yeah. But we were really good if we and we would play on teams against our our neighbors mm-hmm. and they were brothers and so we'd all play teams and I would choose me too. He choose Link or I choose uh just some, whatever characters we were really good at. We got to a point where we could throw items to each other and knock them out like nice. just effortlessly or like. If there was ever a point where he knocked them up into the air, I'm launching them. Yeah. And we'd all get, we, and you know, we'd both get points or whatever. Because we played that game, like you said, just for hours. Oh, yeah. Like our entire summers were spent just sitting there playing that game. If we were, we had any downtime and we weren't running around like the neighborhood, we were playing Smash. Mm-hmm. And, and until our GameCube stopped working or our copy of Smash broke, I don't remember which, we, we just played that game the whole fucking time. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it, it yeah, it's just one of those games that has infinite replayability. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yes, I main Link. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Okay. Link is uh, Link my... was Link is my second favorite character behind Captain Falcon is I'll play with Link. I mean, when it comes to video games as a whole, Link mm-hmm. is my favorite video game character of all time. Like, yeah. cuz like <laughs> right I said, Zelda has been such a huge part of my life because uh, I've I've played Every Zelda all the way up to Twilight Princess, mm-hmm. uh, with the exception of the Minish Cap, because I never had it. So, I mean, like... That's funny. I played one that you didn't play. Right, yeah. I, I That game, you know, people I, I, gave I, that game a lot of shit. Yeah, that game me, was fun. Let me say, I can't remember having the game. Yeah. It's something that 
very possibly could have been there. It could have been around somewhere, and I never got into it for one reason or another. But yeah, I've yeah. played. I, I never played through Skyward Sword, and I've never finished Twilight Princess. But I've I've played almost every Zelda game. I've beaten almost every Zelda game. It's yeah. like, did you play the um, the fucking Wind Waker sequels, the Magic Tracks or whatever? Oh, uh, Spirit Track. I Spirit played Tracks, um, and then the other one. I played Phantom Hourglass. Okay. I did not play Spirit Tracks because I didn't have a play. I didn't have a way to play them at the time, um, because Spirit Tracks came out after uh, there was an incident where my ex fiance and I got jumped and my DS got broke. Uh, that's so, so I didn't have a DS, and uh, you know I was poor, like, yeah, super super poor that day that that during that time, so I couldn't afford another one. And I, in fact, I don't think I had uh, another DS family system until that day you and I went to Half Price Books and I found that blue one for Half Price. Yeah. Yeah. So there was like a four year gap there. <laughs> I understand that. I so, didn't play a lot of the handheld ones. Um, but I mean, I really liked Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, which were the uh, ones that uh, Nintendo collaborated with Capcom on. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, those were so much better than people like to give them credit for. I got I, – I can't remember if I got both of them free recently or I got one – I know I have at least one of them <clears> free <throat> on my 3DS that I played a little bit of, but not much. But I didn't – I never really got into the handheld Zeldas. Mm. Um, other I mean, than, like I said, I, be, I played through Minish Cap. Um, they're good. Oh, yeah. I know they're yeah, good. They're good. I, uh, Zelda DX. Uh, I went, Awakening DX, yeah. Yeah. I went – when um, back when my dad and I used to go deer hunting in uh, Kentucky, yeah, um, we went down there and the family we stayed with, which was family friends of ours, right? They, sh- they, she had a, a a a game a Game Boy, old school Game Boy, right? And that's one of the games she had. So I popped into my GBA and started playing it, and I I might have gotten like a quarter of the way through the game. And like two days, like every moment we weren't hunt, like out in the woods, sitting there waiting for deer to come by, I was playing that game right. as much as possible. To the point where one of the days uh, in the afternoon when we had come back from deer hunting, uh, my dad's like, hey, you know, let's go get you a haircut real quick. So we can get a haircut. I was passing out in the chair while getting my haircut because the night before, and I mean, you get up at 4 a.m. to go deer hunting. Yeah, yeah. That night, I played, until 4 a.m., I played uh, Link's Awakening DX. (laughs) Like, straight up, plugged the Game Boy in, sitting next to the fucking charger, just like playing that game endlessly. And then I I didn't beat it and was like, can I borrow this? She's like, no, it's my game. I'm like, all right, fine. And then never played the rest of that game. But you get a chain chomp as a, like, companion. You never Never, never that blew me game, away. Huh? No, I never that completed sucks, it. Man. I just I got to the I had a chain shop as a companion and I knew where to take it, but I wasn't taking it there because it was awesome and killed all of the enemies. Oh for my me. god, yeah, no, it was really useful. Like yeah, it was yeah. really helpful, especially um, especially in some of the some of the more advanced areas. Like I won the Death Mountain, or yeah. not Death Mountain. Uh, I don't remember what it was called now, but yeah, I won the mountain and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was much much nicer. So I mean, yeah, it's a great game. Oh. I kind of want to go back and play it now, and I know I have it on my 3DS. So. Nice. Um, I, I I think I'm going to wind it down now. Yeah. Um, I mean, aside from... Okay, no. One more game moment for me. Uh-huh. Um, the Doom Eternal uh, reveal trailer. Like, that made me... It made me really fucking excited for the new iteration oh, of Doom. The, yeah, the new new Doom Doom. The new Doom new, new Doom Doom Two. <laughs> I don't know what they're calling it. The new new Doom Doom Two Two. Yeah. <laughs> I Doom Two Electric Boogaloo. I don't know. That game got me back into. I mean, I wasn't out of first person shooters, but I hadn't played a shooter like that, and so yeah. I'm kind of stealing your moment. But that the new Doom made me go we can go back to this kind of game and it can be awesome again. Oh, absolutely, Because, yeah. holy fuck, playing that game, just the beginning of the I game. I mean, I, I had been sitting there in the months leading up to that game's release playing yeah. stuff like Brutal Doom and uh, Project Brutality, yeah, which, yeah. which were a lot of inspirations for that game. So, I mean, no, I, I totally get it. And it's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's really, really fantastic. Yeah. Um, Doom, yeah, Doom 2016 was another, another one of those. It's a lesser moment for me, but, like, the first time I fought the uh, cyber demon. It was like, oh my god, oh, yeah. holy shit! And uh, you beat it, and it pulled. It, you beat it in your world, and 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 whatever you want to call that. And then it pulls you into hell, mm-hmm. and now you're fighting it, and it's complete now somehow. And you're like, 
Oh, shit. Oh, it was so, so awesome. You know, hey. um, another moment, and it was one of frustration and not all, was mm-hmm. when you're fighting those guardians later on. Oh, where you have to expose the uh, you have to expose the one, yeah. and then when you when you finally glory kill them, and this is this was the coolest shit for me. You take one, you break off this extension it has on it, and you stab it into the other. Mm-hmm. It was like fuck yeah! Oh, that's the glory that, kill system was so great. That's as far as I got in that game. You um, need to finish it because uh, the next level I think was like stay uh, map ten. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in the the temple of uh, Kadu oh. or something like that. I, I re- there was a name, yeah, and I don't remember the name now. But you're in the temple, and um, I get in there, and I now to keep in mind, I've been playing the game for like 20 hours straight at this point, like yeah. literally that long. Like I wanted to fucking I wanted to fucking barrel through this game, and you remember I was telling you about it and shit. Yeah. Um, and I'd gotten to this point, so I'm, t- I'm, I'm 18 to 20 hours into this one gaming session. Mm-hmm. So I'm tired. I'm frustrated. I'm yeah. weak. And um, I sit there, and I go into the temple. The mind I, is willing, but the body is weak. I, I Yeah, I killed everything in the. T- I killed everything outside of the temple, and I got into the temple, and I got swarmed on by, like, six cacodemons. Mm-hmm. And they killed me, and I'm like, well, that's it for me. And um, I never went back to the game. I, I shut it down. I saved it or whatever, and I never went back to it. And then um, about, I don't know, five or six months later, I, I that's when I, um, about well, maybe about a year later, I hadn't touched it an entire time. And I, I, that's when I went and uh, changed from Intel, from Team, team Blue to Team Red, and uh, my saves didn't make it. Yeah. And I don't know why. I don't know what happened, but it was very disheartening. And I've not really, I've not played the game since like beyond map five or six since. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm well, the way I'm doing it right now though is I'm playing it on Switch. I'll get through a map. I'll go back through, find a bunch of the secrets, and then I'll be done. And oh, then is I'll, that out on the Switch already? Doom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, that came. I'm sorry. I'm thinking Wolfenstein too. No, I'm not playing Wolfenstein too. Yeah. We haven't even mentioned Wolfenstein. Where the hell are you getting? That no, from? no. Well, the it, it's same publisher coming out soon. Right. For some reason, I had it in my head that it was that Doom that was coming out later on. But, uh, but yeah, no. no um, yeah, I'm. I, I, I'm. As, so as I play it, I play through a map on Switch. Yeah. I get through it. I have my fun, and then. A day or two later, I play through the same map on my PC, and I go back through and, and do that. And I'm kind of keeping them. In, I'm kind of keeping them in sync in a way. That's funny. Yeah, even though it's completely Seeing how, the, how the difference in uh, frame yeah. rate and everything, which is massive. Yeah, it's like going from like it's like going from the Atari to like oh, was the it Dreamcast. That bad on the uh, well, no, it's just Switch? comparing it from it's comparing it. It's comparing the Switch to my yeah. rig. Okay, yeah, Where my CPU so. has more power than the Switch does. Yeah. Alone. So it's like, okay, we're going... Well, okay, that's a bit of an overstatement because the Switch is actually very powerful. But yeah, there, there is a huge difference. Yeah. Because remember, my, my, my PC can play it in 4K at yeah. 120 frames a second, whereas the Switch is chugging along at 720p and 30. So there's yeah. a huge difference in, in power there. But no, it's it's not that bad. But it is like, it, it, it's like... Like you're, you're, it's like you're playing... You know, a game on like the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. That's it's not a game that's really terrible. Maybe it's advanced for the Twenty Six Hundred, but then you move up to something like the Nintendo Sixty Four. So I mean, I, it's just it's not as good. It's yeah, it's not moving as fast. I just remembered you remind me. I have my Ten Eighty Ti coming in the mail tomorrow yeah. or today, and I'm going to put that shit in there, and I'm going to go fucking play Doom. Because I want to play that game in 4K with just uh, everything turned up to maximum. Can you not play it now and everything on maximum in 1080 at least? Not quite, because oh. I, the 970 isn't quite there. Oh, okay. Um, and I, actually, my processor might have been holding me back. I mean, a that's little weird. bit, uh, maybe. Um, um, I could play. It, I would get. It, I would get 60 frames for the most part in 1080. Um, but I, I, I think I had something turned down a little bit. Right. I don't remember. I might be wrong. Don't be wrong. I might be confusing it with The Witcher because I know The Witcher. I had to turn the Witcher the hair effects off. And some of the ta- like going into towns, I would get a bit of a the chunk. Witcher. The Witcher is dropped very, to forty. The and Witcher. Stuff. The Witcher can be a very rough game, and uh, yeah. the Witcher is one of those games where when you're in Novigrad, even the highest end of <sighs> systems can drop. Novigrad just like oh my god, but yeah, I, but yeah, I didn't have any problems playing Doom, and I I was playing it for at sixty frames and ten eighty. That's good. I mean. um, 
And I can't. That's, that's how it should it be. Again. That's yeah. exactly I, how it should be. The last time I tried to run it was when I still was running three monitors. And for some reason, it tried to display on all three at once. Because uh, that's a thing that it can do. Yeah, which it can do it. But my 970 really couldn't handle that. Because uh, three monitors is like right at the edge of that, that card's uh, ability. Mm. And at 1080p, that game, just the intro was like, eh, eh. Eh, system crash. Cho- you're choking the yeah. fucking thing. All right, so guys. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm pulling that game out with my ultra wide 1080p monitor. Now I got to think about going and upgrading to a 4K. I kind of want to vibe. Like I said, I'm waiting on that stuff. So <laughs> I, I want a 4K monitor though. I want. I, I'm waiting now. I'm like, oh, yes. I can definitely say that I have the power. Well, I have that 32 inch in there. Yeah. Um, the the curved Samsung gaming monitor. That's the one I've got. Yeah. Um, you can you can use Nvidia's tools to display content on that thing in 4K. Really? Yep. It's called a super re- super resolution or super dynamic resolution. Okay. So basically, what it does is it renders everything in 4K mm-hmm. and then scales it down to fit your monitor. Oh. Okay. So you're displaying in 4K. Scale down. And okay. it, it's uh, it's kind of nice, but it's stupid. Um, it's like, but I mean, it looks dynamic. Good. Super, yeah, it looks. I mean, it looks great. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it with games. Oh, okay. Because you're gonna choke the shit out of your out of your out of everything. Yeah. I mean, maybe with your 1080, you might be able to do it. But mm. um, I mean, I can do it with my 980, but it it just eh. What did I have to? I remember I had to upgrade to that i7. What the fuck did I have to upgrade that to that i7 for? Something oh, didn't I, work. I can't remember for you now. I know I recommended it to you, and afterwards, whatever was about whole, whatever was what was your problem was fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember what I maybe I had to get the i7 so that I could get the 1080 Ti. I don't know. I, I don't remember. Know. I, I don't know. I upgraded the i7. Now I'm got the fucking card, and all is well with the world. There Once you go. I get that put in there. All right, guys. You, uh, that was it for us. We're gonna go ahead and cut it off there yeah check us out social media do the facebook and like us on itunes give us ratings yeah it helps ratings. A lot. ratings are what we need they're free and they take just a few seconds of your time so exactly give us some ratings just on itunes get some more listeners all right for the ungodly geeks i was joe i was luke you guys have a good day peace out